Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Today we're gonna rip through Twitter, see what people are talking about, uh, share whatever financial information or commodity market information that I find and retweet on my Twitter. Obviously I'm gonna make a bunch of financial opinions along with what I read today, along with their opinions I should say, and uh, we'll go through it here. So a lot of it's gonna be <clears throat> uranium, uh, probably some oil and gas and some other financial topics, maybe a little bit of real estate mixed in as well. So let's dive in. Let's see what people are talking about. Uh, so we've got, again, if you want to follow me, it's at finding underscore finance and uh, finding hyphen value.com if you want to join our community. We've got uranium here. This is from good old Scotty. Scotty. This is Camco to Dow ratio. What he did is he just says, well, Repeat of the last cycle, three years grind up to kick off the bull, then launch. Um, so it's one, two, three, fourth month, one, two, three, fourth month. Uh, this fourth month, which is the month that we are starting today, uh, we had one, two, three, four gigantic months from this period forward. Is this going to repeat in the same manner? Uh, yeah, it, it very well could. And I think he's on monthly time frame here uh, with this Dow CCJ to Dow Jones. One, one, two, three, four, five, six. That might be years. That's probably years right there because that's ninety seven. That's it. he's got it in years. So we get it. we have some big years ahead of us. It says repeat it. three years grind up to kick off the bull launch. Yep, it's in years. Each candlestick's a year, so we could have one, two, three, four more years of a launch or outperformance against the Dow Jones. That's Camco. Charlie says, the mortgage payment needed to buy the median priced home for sale in the US has moved up to $2,651, a new all time high. So home buyer housing payments are up 15% year over year, mortgage payment on a four week rolling average of the median asking price. Do you see any of these uh, overlapping? Not yet. Uh, but what if we get a lower interest rate? What if what if we get a panic? I, I don't think we will. I don't think they can lower rates. If they lower rates, I think the mortgage payment would be more affordable, and I think the housing market would take off again. But that's my take. Silver, ready to fly, says the Hintster. So we've got a downtrend line, which we've broken, retested, and here we go, taken off. And I completely agree. I think it's a really nice kind of uh, longer term looking chart. Uh, I talk about this during the daily standups that this is a retest and we're probably about to hit it to the upside. Uh, precious metals in general, gold, silver, this is the chart of silver in US dollars. But gold, silver, uh, platinum, they all look good. Uh, another thing to, to keep in mind when you look at a lot of these, um, we get these like double hump patterns. I, I see that a lot before gigantic launches, uh, like this double hump here, and then it launches double. This is a bigger one. And maybe we get a big launch here. Uh, again, I don't, it's not market predictions. That's not what these charts are used for. We just say, hey, resistance broken, trend lines broken, retest. That's generally a good time to be looking at whatever um, asset it is at that time. It says everyone is bullish yet there are zero bullish catalysts. Uh, I think that's, I think he's talking about uranium and maybe he's talking about the overall market. Uh, if it's about uranium, it's not about bullish catalysts and it's not about a, per, you know, a, a person or a group of people that can identify like, this is it, this is what caused the 10% up day. God, I hate that. Um, it's gonna happen and when the money flows, it's gonna flow. You don't know what's going to cause the flow um, and, and you could maybe misappropriate what that is uh, appropriated to. No one knows uh, to that extent. All we can say is that uh, if it's uranium, we've been squeezing, squeezing, squeezing and we've broken to the upside. That's what, And you're gonna see a bunch of different charts coming up here uh, of me showing that to everyone. Uh, and, and I had to, retweet a few just to ensure that I'm seeing what I am seeing. Uh, modern society can't exist without four ingredients. Ammonia, which is fertilizer. Plastics, 
computers, healthcare products, etc. Uh, we use it a lot also in uh, food product in terms of bags. Steel, skyscrapers, bridges, cars, sca scalpels. I don't know if we use too much steel anymore. We're trying to go to aluminum in cars at least. Cement, buildings, roads, dams, runways, uh, they all require fossil fuels. Yep, you got that right. Fossil fuels isn't going uh, anywhere. Uh, oil will once again be profitable when market destocking runs out. Goldman Sachs, Jeff Curry. Basically, the inventories need to deplete, and once they deplete or they destock, that's when the price starts to run. When will that happen? Everyone, when, 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 when? I don't know, guys. I don't know the exact timing of the exact moment of the exact day. Um, if anyone knows, please let me know, and I'll let everyone else know. Uh, what I do uh, is the same approach that Buffett does, same approach that Peter Lynch uh, does. And it's it's not the approach in, in commodities. It's the approach that if you've got a large valuation under uh, large undervaluation, so there's a big value gap, that is what we exploit. We can hedge ourselves with time. And I know people try to do all sorts of math and trying to figure stuff out. That, that, that's the best approach that I've found. Use ratios, use the market conditions. Uh, if we're in an inflationary time and something's undervalued, that's generally when commodities outperform. Uh, and that's about all you can do. And then you hedge yourself with a bunch of time. But that's what he says, and I agree. I think there are deficits out there. Really good setup for quarter three, quarter four of 2023 for oil. T-Bird says, short some shares, start a false rumor, cover your shorts, buy shares, announce the rumor was false, sell shares, profit. Not that I think this was a scam, mind you. Um, this could be things that are released from JP Morgan and whatnot. If you go look at the silver squeeze, they, they started releasing articles right like the day after the squeeze. Like you should not be in silver stocks. You should not be doing this. Uh, almost as if they had some sort of stake in it to some degree. But maybe this is, maybe this is all released on purpose to get everybody to sell their shares where they can either buy them up or they can cover their shorts. Yep. Eric Nuttall, sentiment as measured by net length is as bad as it was during the COVID lows and energy investors are exhausted. All the while, oil demand sets records month after month. I haven't even, I haven't given up on the year. Find out why. Yeah, so a lot of people, we're, we're a lot of, there's a lot of barrel counters. And the demand continues to go up, and we are seeing inventories uh, come down a little bit. And obviously, net length, which is the positioning uh, in the futures market, has come off a little bit, and it's as bad as 2020. So it's a pretty good setup if you look at it. Uh, we can also look at the ratio of oil to gold ratio, and that is, or it was at 27, which was, that's a pretty cheap price uh, in relationship to history. More oil-related news. So this is where 2023 will start to separate itself from 2022. With demand where it is, if U.S. oil demand continues to trend higher, refinery throughput will need to materially increase. If not, then you will see product short storage trend lower versus 2022's increase. And there it is. We could trend lower here versus 2022 where we came back up. We'll see. Let's just keep monitoring it together. If it heads lower, perfect for us. I'm positioned in it. If it heads higher, well, we just have to be patient and, and we'll work our way through it. But this is generally, we get a little bit of build, it uh, looks like, through all these years. Uh, Patrick Kiramis says, what do you mean oil is up 4% today? Forget the daily noise, zoom out. June is also a quarterly close. So here we are. Uh, this is massive support volume base basically right underneath us. Uh, that's why we're creating these wicks. It says dips are getting bought so far. We've got a lot of buying pressure underneath us. It's acting as support. Uh, and we'll see where we go and end the quarter uh, at the end of June. But big picture view, 
well, it just looks like we're doing a retest move, and that's generally a good spot to buy uh, historically is these retest moves. You get a breakout and then a retest of the breakout, and we're, we've got all the support underneath us. Uh, Grady says, Platinum's pr Platinum priced in Europe, or Euro, is creeping closer and closer to its eight-year inverse head and shoulders neckline. As pointed out for decades, we often see precious metals move in other currencies before in USD, which has been the case this time around, too, with gold, as, as posted. Um, I agree. This thing looks fantastic. It's an inverted shoulder, head, shoulder. Um, I'm also seeing inverted head and shoulders in uh, oil and natural gas stocks. And all you have to do is, if you can get somewhere in this shoulder region, and you just stick it, you just stick with it. You don't try to trade it. You don't try to, you know, do the day-to-day -day movements, and you just play the big pattern here. Um, we could see a gigantic move to the upside uh, in a pretty quick time frame. He also has the projection of this head and the projection on top of it to fourteen hundred dollars, uh, which then pushes us into probably another larger pattern. So remember, these patterns lead into larger patterns. And right now, this is the pattern we're focusing on. And hopefully that breaks and moves to the upside. Um, I am loaded to the gills in probably four or five different sectors. Uh, all I need is one of these sectors to rip it. And it's going to probably change my entire uh, portfolio uh, makeup and my life. <laughs> I'll just say that. Um, this is you, 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 you got what I need. So you, you got Bismarck, you guys. Energy fuel, anyone? So this is you, 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 you. Uh, we're getting close to a breakout here. And here we go. We could, we could be launching. Uh, I, I've got a couple of these uranium charts. They just look ridiculous, guys. I, what I, I, and again, guys, this is what I do. You know what I do? I don't do, I don't do anything. I just sit on my hands, buy the shares, get them as cheap as you can, and just sit. Wait. Uh, and if we get these big breakouts, perfect. Perfect. Um, I think that this is going to come. We can, we can look at the commodity price. Actually, I have the commodity price coming up here. We'll take a look at it. Uh, oh, and here's U.S. oil demand continues to trend in the right direction. We keep trending higher in oil demand. Or, uh, sorry, this is not just oil demand. This is the four-week average U.S. implied oil demand for gasoline, distillate, jet fuels, for all those. Got uranium. Tell me what is bearish about Camco's quarterly chart. Yeah, and it's starting to break to the upside here of the paradigm shift breakout line. Let's launch this thing, guys. Why not? You know, let's go uranium. Go Camco. It's our leader. DXY having a rough day. Look at this thing. <clears throat> Rolling over, puking it on itself. Um, obviously had a little bit too much to drink last night, so it's... Uh, it's throwing it over, praying to the porcelain gods. It is coming on down. And it looks like we could see further downside in the dollar. It says, a professional scientific forecast is never wrong. Here's why. <laughs> Gold probabilistic forecasts. Uh, very likely is what he's got is a big move to the upside. The core of the greatest probability around 59 degrees slope. Very likely. Uh, likely implies greater than 50%. So unlikely, very unlikely, extremely unlikely. Uh, there's a lot of people that come out with pretty bold forecasts to the upside and to the downside, uh, probably to get views. Uh, you got to keep that in mind that they, they want your eyes. They want to see uh, more views. And they're going to post more ridiculous stuff to get you to click on their links. So just keep that in mind. Uh, oil headline. So we took your uh, we took uranium exposure to lunatic levels. Uh, this is Cuppy. He says we took uranium exposure to lunatic levels this week. As as we heard, there's an off market U print at 59 that should clear next week. I think that's going to wake people up because one utility filling one reactor effectively lifted the market 20. percent This is the physical. The physical uranium price futures pricing we're starting to break to the upside this is a, a broken uh tr down you know pattern to the upside and we could start ripping it here guys um you know what i'm doing i've already positioned it i'm just waiting just waiting i'm in the equities though i'm not in the futures markets or anything like that 
Here's Josh Young. It says Jody oil update uh, by the numbers versus March 2019. Oil demand 108%. Crude production 100%. Crude and product stocks uh, 336 million barrels below the five year average. That's what we've got going on right now. And this is the 43 countries updated the database with the most recent March 2023 data. And that's versus of March uh, 2019 levels. It's extremely hard to get your hands on a house right now. Everybody is afraid of high interest rates. But the moment those interest rates come down, all hell is going to break loose and prices will go through the roof from pent up demand and FOMO. Well, I mean, that's kind of the camp I've been in. I don't know who's behind this Michael Burry stock tracker, but I kind of agree with what he's got to say. It says, question for all my housing bubble 2.0, 3.0 friends. If home sales stay flat for years, can you still have a housing bubble crash? Good question. I don't think so. Here's Camco, another uh, chart, basically uh, in US dollars. Break into the upside, guys. This is the beginning of hopefully the big move, fingers crossed. And don't get too discouraged if we get a couple of bloody nose down days. Uh, just keep watching the trend lines, keep watching the uh, large green candlesticks to small red candlestick down days. That's what we wanna see. Silver price in Australian dollars had a breakout in April as it closed high above the blue trend line for the 15 year yellow triangle. With precious metals, breakouts, and other currencies often front-run breakouts in the U.S. dollar. Now a back-test mode. So we broke out. We're doing a back-test in basically all of the precious metals, gold, silver, and platinum. And we have these just ridiculously large patterns, guys. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm not going to do anything, guys. I've got, got a bunch in all these different sectors. And, and I know people get really afraid. They get frightened because of the short-term market movements. This is what I look at. I look at all these big long-term charts. I'm like, guys, this is going, this is going a lot higher. Um, if you're focused on the short term, it's, you're just focusing on things that I don't think matter as much. Um, there's always volatility in the short term, especially, especially, especially with a lot of uh, these highly volatile equities. And if you want the big gains, you have to ride the volatility. You can't let the bull buck you off. If the bull's going to buck you off and hit you in the face, um, then then you're not going to be able to ride this big bull market. Uh, again, uh, you're not going to lose money if you just ride it. Uh, you lose money when you sell and you get out of it. Uh, the way that I generally look at it is if you're in some of these companies and you've got large volatility, uh, I'll, con I'll continue to cost average in. It doesn't mean that I'll cost average in uh, in a particular stock that's underperforming a sector. Um, I'm looking for the whole sector to be moving up and down, and I'll pick my favorite companies and continue to add in when the entire sector is down. So I'm not, I'm not condoning uh, adding to your worst performers. Um, what, I do, what I mean is the whole sector is down. I add into the sector again, and I, I pick those favorite companies that are the, that are the strongest companies. Here is uh, Elevate. Uh, this is by Uselink. Just to show you uh, a big picture view, this thing is squeezing down. Now we could get a false little breakdown uh, or we could get a big launch. You know what I do? Again, I don't try to time it. I just cost average in. Cost average in in this tip here, perfect. Got a bunch of shares, perfect. If it launches, perfect. Everything's perfect. Um, if you get too impatient, uh, let's say you bought up here or something and you're all the way down and you've got a, a loss or whatever. I just buy it where I try to find you know, a, a dead period, so to speak, kind of in the middle or at the end of a pattern. And I just cost average in it, lowers my cost basis. Perfect. <laughs> uh, here's your uranium. So this is CCJ and the breakout. Good volume two, busting out uh, for CCJ. Uh, and then we also have the yeah Camco on, on both of them. Look at the volume here. Huge volume uh, breaking on out. Looks good. Uh, it says every day above $70 WTI is a good day. So these are 2024 free cash flow yields at $70 natural gas strip, forex strip, and 15. So 
I know people look at this and they're like, oh, well, these guys are going to make all the money. What I'm going to say is the guys on the right over here, if they're making less money, they're generally the higher cost producers. When prices swing in the opposite direction, when they go from low to high, these are the guys that will outperform as all these ones on the right-hand side, generally speaking. Um, it's good to get some of these in the middle, too. Uh, sometimes in the middle, you can make a little bit of money, weather some bad stuff, uh, and then you can still get a big launch to the upside as well. So what I do is I take kind of like this three-quarter spot, and I say anything that cuts to the right is going to be a higher risk. Not, it's not really higher risk at this point. I would say it's just high, more highly uh, leveraged to the price move of the commodity. If you're a big bull in natural gas or if you're a big bull in uh, oil, you're going to want to pick some of the higher cost producers, uh, get a little bit of exposure to it to give you the upside uh, leverage. Here's one. It says, you see the volume curve? That is what pushed the FICO data up and down, and it's been trending the same way for, for years. So this is your FICO. This is your credit scores. Mortgage originations. You can see, look at look how many 760 plus mortgage mortgages were given out from 2020 onward. That is just ridiculous, guys. So we have very good credit. People who've taken out mortgages with good credit. It's good. Why is Biden releasing? Okay, so yeah, they're releasing. Why is why is he releasing oil from the S pair like a madman? That's already set before. Uh, why are the low demand narratives floating around while air travel is surpassing 2019 highs? Why is Buffett buying Oxy, et cetera, et cetera? Yeah, I agree. Uh, I can't take credit for this. Awesome find. Uh, yeah, what? so Gareth Soloway, he just shows you this, this move. Um, what this is called is a bull trap. <laughs> this is the bull trap that I talk about. Bull trap, and then you get into this long uh, grinding lower. So this is from the NASDAQ 100 index in the 2000 market. You get the, the peak and then the bull trap and then the, the move lower. Again, this is NASDAQ 100 index, uh, 2008. You get a peak, you get a bull trap, and then you get completely slaughtered to the downside. Uh, again, it's uh, 40%, 40%, roughly, 25 23%. And here we are, we're at 38 and 38 on the current set up in the NASDAQ. Um, I don't know if this is going to go a little bit higher. I'm not here to try to make predictions, uh, but what I do think this could be is the bull trap for the NASDAQ 100. Uh, why does this matter? Uh, this is data here for the NASDAQ. You're like, oh, who cares about the NASDAQ? Okay, guys, calm down. The NASDAQ goes through this cycle of a bull trap the same time that commodities go through the bear trap. And this rotation of money, when it comes back down, is going to feed the commodity bull market. It's also going to come from the bond market if we have higher interest rates. It's that big money rotation I've been talking about for years on the channel here. And, and it could accelerate at certain times. So what we need to do is just let this work its way out. Uh, it takes time. In 2021, before we even hit a NASDAQ top, I told everyone that we were going to have increasing interest rates and that the NASDAQ would roll over. In 2020 and 2021, look what happened. We had increasing interest rates and the NASDAQ rolled over. We've got a bull trap that we have to get through. This topping process takes a couple of years. It's not super fast. And what people do is they've got their swipe left, swipe right mentality. That is instant feedback. And then they say, oh, it's not happening. Swipe right. Oh, it's not happening. Sell. Swipe left. Whatever it is, you gotta. You have to match up the time frame that you have, and match it up to what the market is going to give. The markets are slow, guys. They're slow, and you have to be slow. You have to be super patient. Just wait for things to play out. So that at least that's my approach to it. Now here's something that's kind of interesting. He says. The U.S. just hit $1 trillion in credit card debt. A credit crisis is coming. Well, why is it coming? I don't see a credit crisis any time in history when it was at $760 billion. Why is $1 trillion a, a new magical number? I don't know. That's the only thing I don't understand. Because we've got a $1 trillion in all credit card debt that that's necessarily bad. When this increases, they're creating uh, money in the system. That's all inflation. That's, that's money creation if they don't pay it back immediately. Says so great example where 
uh, here why 2008 housing models don't work. 2005, 2007 saw the biggest spike, biggest one-time spike in supply in history, and now investment demand falling didn't. They overplayed the story. Yeah, we've got no inventory, and we had massive spikes in inventory during 05 to 07. You could see it. And there was all a bunch of crap loans, and we had a bunch of foreclosures. It's not like the conditions we have today. So silver actually likes to bottom in the abyss of a recession. So instead of fearing a recession, look at what the price chart is actually doing. So this is for over 50 years. Silver liked to bottom in the abyss of the recession here. It bottomed the recession, bottomed the recession. Um, maybe this is where the recession is. I don't know. Uh, maybe we get a launch here in silver. Uh, here's Brandy. He says, we are pleased to have worked alongside our industry colleagues and the Namibian Uranium Association have achieved clarification on this issue. To be absolutely clear, existing license holders, including Bannerman, have nothing to be concerned about. I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, we'll stop it there, guys. We're, we're at 26 minutes. So that's what we've got for today, guys. If you guys like this content, give me a thumb up. Subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to the website if you like. There it is over there. Um, that's, that's what we've got going on here, guys. All that big picture information. I can't find anything in commodities that I don't really like. Um, maybe some soft commodities don't look too hot. But overall, if it's metal, pretty much like it. Uh, if precious metal, even base metals don't look too bad. Uh, I still like energy as probably it's energy and precious metals that I like the most. Uh, those are my, my two largest holdings scattered across a bunch of, of those sectors. And you know what I'm doing? I'm just chilling, guys. I'm just chilling. I'm just chilling, waiting for uh, everything to take off. And, you know, I am getting some slack. You know, people think that I'm wrong or whatever. Uh, they think that, oh, it's, since it's going down, yeah, just wait. Just wait. Uh, I'll be, hopefully, um, the last one to laugh. We'll see. <laughs> um, and, and hopefully we get a big bull market here. And who, who knows? Six months, three months, one year at, at, at the most, maybe. Um, I think it's hopefully right on top of us. Fingers crossed. Uh, but again, I'm just sitting here relaxing, watching the sky. Uh, we've got the same market conditions as previous cycles. Uh, these these they generally rocket launch under an increasing interest rate environment. Could we still get one slowdown before it? It's possible. It's possible that we get interest rates to pull back because of the fear of recession. We just it's it's not going to come from the housing market. It's got to come from something else. But that's what we've got, guys. Uh, so that's all I've got. We'll catch you next time. This is finding value.